guys who have probably said too much already. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. How you doing, buddy? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah? Yeah. Good, good. Had a good week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. That's I did some shopping today. Shopping? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Food? Items? Costco trip. Costco, hell yeah. That's always good. Oh, yeah. Bulk, I like bulk. Very diverse in there as far as oh, like yeah. food goes and stuff. Items, too. There's a lot of shit. Yeah, TVs, computers. Yeah, lots of TVs. Furniture, rugs. That, too. Diapers. Legos. Yeah, all, all like so- pharmacy section. All toys. sorts of shit. Yeah, cutlery. Their cakes, though, are the best. They're so good. Yeah. They're very good. Yeah, that's true. I probably shouldn't be having any, but they're good. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> Diabetes and cake don't equal success, I don't it, think. It doesn't mix very well. No. Definitely not a successful <laughs> team, for <laughs> right, sure. Right. You just got to take a little shotty shot of your insulin, though, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, just pump it a up. prep work. You'll be <laughs> yeah. all right. Yeah. Get ready for it. It's like going to the gym, but eating cake. What? Take no. Take a pre-workout, but for cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pre-workout insulin yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. ready to eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. What you been up to? Not too much. Trying to stay busy. Hanging out with the fam, man. Yeah, how are they Just doing? Be good, good. Always good. We uh, went to the Apple Orchard yesterday. Ooh. Went shoe shopping, you know. Ooh. Yeah, back to school and they get some new shoes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Apple Orchard was fun, though, you know. Get a lot of apples. No, didn't get any apples. No apples. Not a single apple. Did you we eat want, any? We like Honey Crisp and they didn't have any. Oh. Yeah. But we got apple slushies. What about Sucked a- on those while we were in the store. Ooh. Yep. What about apple cider? No. But we no? got apple donuts. Well, I suppose apple cider is more for like, you know, Halloween time. Yeah. That's fall, when it's popular. Halloween, yeah. 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 Still a little early for that. But we got some apple donuts, which is always a favorite of ours. I heard those are good. They're so good. I'm glad I can live vicariously through you. Yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> Take a little insulin, buddy. A little pre-workout. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did we get? Oh, we got a couple. We got a Dutch apple pie and a blackberry pie. Oh, yeah. that sounds good. That's always got to gotta happen, too. It's, it's, these are like yearly things we get. You know, oh. First trip to the to the orchard. Right. What else did we get? I'm not know. much of a pie guy. I don't know why. Oh, boy. I like cheesecake. Cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake is for sure good, too. I love it all. I'm a fat boy. I love, I love food. Again, I'm glad I can live vicariously yeah. through you. Yeah. I'm trying to limit sending you pictures anymore too often. Oh, it's okay. Is I, it? Okay. I'm, I'm building up a tolerance. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> and I'm trying to. I had some real good chicken the other day. Ooh. Dave's Hot Chicken. It was actually okay. The first couple times I had it was better. This is a new store. Oh. Yeah. You had it before few times yeah a couple times the first i've sent you a picture before of it probably yeah there's a good chance yeah it's good stuff or it was it was yeah, yeah. the other store was the store was not but they, it was new it was like just opened so it makes uh, sense okay yeah don't go to just open stores usually they're not that well prepared wait a month yeah or two so i know we were talking about this kind of a couple weeks ago mm-hmm with the Nephilim episodes. Oh, episode. yeah. Okay. I, I think I know where this is going. And we had discussed about the Anunnaki. Yes, the Anunnaki. So I think that's where we're going to lead off today. Right. We're Sweet. Gonna, we're going to dig down this rabbit hole. This is an exciting rabbit hole. And could go on for quite a while if we wanted it to, you know. Right. There's a lot of routes this too can take. There's a lot of a lot of information, a lot of different shit. A lot of thoughts and theories. A lot of stuff we don't know. Like most things. Like a lot of things. Welcome to the world we live in. Cheers to that. That's why that's why we're having this talk. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to understand what the hell's going on around here. You and me both. Yeah. The Anunnaki are a group of deities of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. In the earliest Sumerian writings about them, which come from the post-Akkadian period, the Anunnaki are deities in the pantheon and descendants of An and Ki, the god of heavens and the goddess of the earth. And their primary function was to decree the fates of humanity. Mm. So that they were kind of like judge and jury. Oh, well, it's An? I thought it was Anu. I thought it was Anu. Anu is just another word or just another name for him. Okay. 
So Anu or An and Ki. Because, yeah, because that's supposed to be like where Anunnaki comes from. It's from Anu and Ki, and the, I don't remember the Nana comes from. But. <laughs> Nana. <laughs> <laughs> Which would make sense yeah, na. as to their name. What na means. Anu, na, ki. Na means something. And? Oh. Anu and ki. Oh, that would make sense. I mean, that's the only connection I can think of. Yeah, that's that's all I know about like them. So the name Anunnaki, again, is derived from An or Anu, the Sumerian god of the sky. And the name means princely offering. The Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of Anu and his consort, the earth god is key. Samuel Noah Kramer identifies key with the Sumerian mother goddess Ninhursag, stating that they were originally the same figure. The oldest of the Anunnaki was Enlil, the god of air and chief god of the Sumerian pantheon. Kind of like uh, Zeus. Yeah. If you want to think of the Greek pantheon. The Sumerians believed that until Enlil was born, heaven and earth were inseparable. Then Enlil split heaven and earth in two and carried away the earth while his father An carried away the sky. Yeah, Enlil was supposed to be the king of earth, essentially, kind of. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. The Anunnaki are chiefly mentioned in literary texts and very little evidence to support the existence of any cult of them has yet been unearthed. This is likely due to the fact that each member of the Anunnaki had his or her own individual cult separate from the others. Similarly, no representations of the Anunnaki as a complete group have yet been discovered, although a few depictions of two or three individual members together have been identified. Deities in the ancient Mesopotamia were also almost exclusively humanoid. They were thought to possess extraordinary powers and were often envisioned as being of tremendous physical size. Kind of like giants, yeah. like the Nephilim. Yeah. The deities typically wore melum, an ambiguous substance which, quote-unquote, covered them in terrifying splendor. Melum could also be worn by heroes, kings, giants, and even demons. Interesting. So they all had their own special clothes they wore. Right. And it was terrifying. It was... But awesome. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, you're so scary, but beautiful. Yeah, I wonder what it was, like, what it looked like, you know? Was it like a, like a slime that they put on, like a Ugh. like a cream or something? Or was it like armor that was shimmering and pointy? Or? It's just it's just Vaseline. That's bullshit! So it made Slip him shine. Slip and sliding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to catch me now. The effect that a deity's melum has on a human is described as knee. A word for the physical tingling of the flesh. Like a stimulant. Or a poison. Kind of like if you get stung by a mosquito and it itches. But instead of itching, it's tingling. Sounds like stimulation. Well, are mosquitoes, don't they have poison? Isn't that how they... Isn't that what that is? A type of poison? Yeah. Yeah, it's not venom, it's... It's like a numbing it's agent. Like an yeah. Like it's like a ickiness. Yeah, that's like they got dirty mouths kind of shit. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, all that swamp water and they're Ugh. born in swamp water, dude. Yeah, yeah. standing water. water. Yeah, standing water. Nasty stuff. They're born in bacteria. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think is gonna happen? Itchiness. Yeah. Deities were almost always depicted wearing horned caps consisting of up to seven superimposed pair of ox horns. They were Loki on roids, huh? Yeah, no, no <laughs> shit. They were just balling out with that melon right. in the ox head. I'm just thinking horns all over. Just a horned crown. Just everywhere. Yeah. All over the head. That would be kind of scary. That would be terrifying. Horns, mosquitoes, they're both sharp, right? Yeah. Making the connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Has nothing to do with each other. <laughs> They were also sometimes depicted wearing clothes with elaborate decorative gold and silver ornaments sewn into them. Like a goddamn Christmas tree. Yeah, I mean, they were the emperors of their days. They gotta get fancy. They were balling, yeah. They were balling. Yeah, because they were here to, well, maybe we'll get to that part. They were here to do stuff. Yeah. Get shit done. Yeah. The ancient Mesopotamians believed that their deities lived in heaven, 
after an earlier history of visiting Earth in the mythological text and that a god statue was a physical embodiment of the god himself. As such, cult statues were given constant care and attention and a set of priests were assigned to tend to them. These priests would clothe the statues and place feasts before them so they could, quote unquote, eat. A deity's temple was believed to be that deity's literal place of residence. In addition to that, the gods had boats, full-size barges, which were normally st stored inside their temples and were used to transport their statues along waterways during various religious festivals. Hell yeah. How heavy do you think those statues were? Were they just like normal sized statues? Were they huge statues? I mean, they had to be in barges, was right? It, yeah, was it just like a bust? Was it a bunch of little busts? Pro like, probably a little bigger. Yeah, I'm thinking statue, and they were big, so it was probably at least their size, right? And then some. I would assume so. Yeah, it's probably big as shit. Real big. Yeah, especially if they had a fucking barge to move them. Yeah. Uh huh. That would be wild. Yeah. The gods also had chariots which were used for transporting their statues by land. Sometimes... Well, okay. That, would, that makes sense. So it's not as big, Super maybe. Super massive, right. Maybe it's a really it's big chariot. It's not preposterous. Right. Yeah. Not Washington Monument size. Sure. Yeah. Just normal size. As you would expect. Yeah. A statue to be. Yeah, just a normal <laughs> yeah, size statue. Sure. Sometimes a deity statue would be transported to the location of a battle so that the deity could watch the battle happen. Hell yeah. The major deities of the Mesopotamian pantheon, which included the Anunnaki, were believed to participate in, quote-unquote, the assembly of the gods, through which the gods made all their decisions. This assembly was seen as a divine counterpart to the semi-democratic legislative system that existed during the third dynasty of Ur. All right. Outstanding. They like to battle and have a good time. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like fun. They this had is the, definitely different stuff than I've heard about them, though. When they had this assembly of the gods, did they have to get moved? So they were just like, could you imagine those people moving them statues, setting them there, and then leaving? And they're just like, guess they're going to talk about it. Right. And who's the one know. that like brought everybody together and was like, these people need to talk? Enlil? Could be. I don't know. He's like, hey, listen up, peasants. <laughs> Figure this shit out. <laughs> we got to come to an understanding. Right. He's the one running, running Earth. That's true. Yeah. He had a messenger or messengers. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe one, workers. Maybe one of the priests. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be an interesting thing to watch. Yeah. So just thinking of mythological, right? Mm -hmm. I know it may not happen now, but do you really think that there is a communication between a god figure and a human? That a god figure and a human could interact? Yeah. Well, it's spoken of in the Bible a lot, isn't it? So why not? I'm just wondering. Just picking your brain. What do you think? Sure. If they wanted to, God, God's supposed to be powerful, right? Yeah. They should be able to have a, you know, some sort of way to communicate what the fuck they want to happen. Yeah, True. I think so, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah, I agree. You? Yeah. Anything could happen. <clears throat> right. Never know. So, some different mythologies I have. One mythology is the Sumerian mythology. And in this... The earliest known usages of the term Anunnaki come from inscriptions written during the reign of Gudea and the third dynasty of Ur. In the earliest texts, the term is applied to the most powerful and important deities in the Sumerian pantheon, the descendants of the sky god An, or Anu. This group of deities probably included the seven gods who decree, which are Anu, Enlil, Enki, Ninhursag, Nana, Udu, and Inanna. There's Nana. <laughs> that makes sense. There she is. Although certain deities are described as members of the Anunnaki, no complete list of the names of all the Anunnaki have survived, and they are usually only referred to as a cohesive group. Interesting. So okay. like their own little race? Yeah, no, 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 for sure. So a lot of my YouTube watches and stuff, my deep dives into this has been the Sumerian text. Yeah. Is what I've heard discussed the most. I definitely think it's the most common. Yeah. What they always spew is quite a bit different than what you just said, actually. So I'm super, like, this is very interesting. Oh. Yeah. Your internet research brought you to Anu, 
a godlike figure. Yep. Mingling with Ki, the earth goddess. Which created the Anunnaki. So I've heard from my research stories similar to that. Anu and Ki, but I I don't totally recall if Ki was an earth goddess or an earth being or whatever. Oh. Or just another goddess oh. is what I recall. All right, there were these two godlike beings in the universe who mingled and made the Anunnaki on planet Nibiru. And they're all saying that comes from the Sumerian text. Interesting. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying why this is interesting, because literally everything I have pretty much ever seen about it is saying the Nibiru story. Yeah. With Anu and Ki, but Ki isn't... I don't remember her being an earth goddess ever. Hmm. I remember her just being a goddess. And they made the Anunnaki on Nibiru, and then, you know, the whole... Then they came here. Travel thing, and there's a whole... There's, oh. Yeah, the planet that we now know as Planet X, and la di da di da Yeah, and it wasn't that uh, Enlil split them. Enlil's actually of royal Anunnaki bloodline, and was given Earth to rule. Oh, shit. He's the one who's supposed to rule Earth and watch over it, make sure everything's going right for their mission of... Oh, he's the supervisor of Earth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then eventually his kids fuck things up, which some people then think ties into Christianity and is where Christianity stems from, and, or is what Christianity actually is. So that's that's where I can hit conspiracy as far as that goes, but... <laughs> Fucking could be, man. I guess. Furthermore, Sumerian texts describe the Anunnaki inconsistently and do not agree on how many there actually were or what their divine function was. Originally, they appear to have been heavenly deities with immense powers. In the poem Enki and the World Order, the Anunnaki do homage to Enki, sing hymns of praise in his honor, and take up their dwellings among the people of Sumer. The same composition twice states that the Anunnaki decree the fates of mankind. Like Sumer, God. Samaria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, Samaria. Which is interestingly been called uh, the first organized city, like civilization. Samaria? Yes. Oh. Yes, which is what makes these tablets so interesting. So is that kind of like where Atlantis was? The be? Sumerian text. So interestingly enough, the Anunnaki were called. Supposedly, by ancient people, Atlanteans, or Anunnaki, either one. I didn't get any of that when I was looking at shit, but that's interesting. Yeah. I feel like I've heard that before. Yeah, and um, yeah, the whole reason that Atlanteans are gone with their advanced technology is nuclear war had happened. And there's some kind of evidence of that, actually. Talking about the Eye of the Sahara? Well, I mean, there's, yeah, the the vast deserts on yeah, Earth. That. Um, I mean, Mars has been rumored to have been... A planet that has gone through nuclear mm-hmm. stuff now. There's pyramid-like objects on there and whatnot. But also, Enlil's son, Amun-Ra. 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 Like the god of... Like the Egyptian god, yeah, Amun-Ra. Him. him. That's Enlil's son. One oh. of his sons. Oh. They have brothers who were all multiple pharaohs. and Right. Them motherfuckers had weapons of mass destruction, which was written back in that text, I guess, something of that line. Those weapons had evil winds that would make your nails and hair fall out and, like, your skin melt. And and what does that sound like? Nuclear fallout. Yeah. Or a really bad skin condition. Yeah. Sure. But, no, the evil winds would carry, right? Oh. So some of, the, some of the Anunnaki had stayed and some had left, taken the technology with, but leaving the remaining... Anunnaki here to live out their days and then the other ones are going to come back when they feel like the winds are gone you know it's safe to come back they're going to keep watch and come back when they're ready to come back kind of thing interesting that's a fun little side note yes sir didn't know that yeah whether that happens or not I hope we're around to see it it's interesting yeah while we're on the subject of Amun-Ra so Amun-Ra some people believe is who Christians actually are praying to. Because what do you say at the end of what you pray? Amen. Amen. You're saying his name. Amen. You're saying it. No, amen. Amen Ra. I didn't even make that connection. Yes. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. That's a wild thought. Yeah. Yeah. There was a whole <laughs> bunch of other like crazy ties into Wouldn't it. Wouldn't that but be yeah, some shit? This was something I just seen another day for the first time, actually. It's funny it came across it. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, but that's what that's what it was saying is that Christians are actually praising an Anunnaki god. Demi royal bloodline, whatever. I don't know. Demi god thing. Yeah. Well, they're not gods. They're, they're aliens. Real. They're supposedly from the stories that I know. Right. They're aliens from the planet Nibiru with advanced technology and like a million years on us or something like way advanced. But that's the YouTube version of the Sumerian text. Yeah, you're gonna get a lot of that though. Yeah, some of it. Some of that some of stuff it, yeah. we were talking about, not the Amon Ra stuff. That was just random thing I'd seen. I like that. So virtually every major deity in the Sumerian pantheon was regarded as the patron of a specific city and was expected to protect that city's interests. The deity was believed to permanently reside within the city's temple. One text mentions as many as 50 Anunnaki associated with the city of Eridu. In the story Inanna's descent into the netherworld, there are only seven Anunnaki who reside within the underworld and serve as their judges. Inanna stands trial before them for her attempt to take over the underworld. They deem her guilty of hubris and condemn her to death. Ouch. Not fun. That's what you get, bitch. That's what you get. <laughs> Trying to take over the show. Yeah, fuck Sounds like it's you. a group effort, and she's like, no, this is mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck, man? No, this is fuck my you. shit. Yeah. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here, lady. We Karen. Don't, we don't want <laughs> the first Karen ever. No, no, no. That's probably where that came from. No, no, no. It's a good possibility. Major deities in Sumerian mythology were associated with specific celestial bodies. Inanna was believed to be the planet of Venus. Utu was believed to be the sun. Nana was believed to be the moon. An was identified with all the stars of the equatorial sky. And Enlil with those of the northern sky. And Enki with those of the southern sky. So they all had their own little piece of the world. Yeah, spots in the story. Maybe that's why there's all the different gods across the world. Like we said. That makes sense. We're talking about Nephilim with the fallen angels. Some people do call the Anunnaki the fallen angels because they fell out of the skies, right? Oh, Aliens. Fell there out you of the go. Skies, yeah. When looking this stuff up, I researched their names. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them have the same kind of weapons that, like, Zeus or Poseidon or Advanced technology. Ares. Right. right. I've, I saw Could thunderbolts. Be. I saw a trident. I mm-hmm. saw a hammer. You know, it was all kind of sort of the same. Yeah. In the Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian mythologies, in the Akkadian text of the second millennium BC, they follow similar portrayals of the Anunnaki from Inanna's descent into the netherworld, depicting them as cathodic underworld deities. In an abbreviated Akkadian version of the same story, written in the early second millennium, again, Ereshkigal, the queen of the underworld comments that she drinks water with the Anunnaki. Later in the same poem, she then orders her servants to fetch the Anunnaki to decorate the threshold steps with coral and to seat them on golden thrones. So two different texts saying almost the same thing. Right. During the old Babylonian period from 1830 BC to 1531 BC, a new set of deities known as the Igigi were introduced. The relationship between the Anunnaki and the Igigi is very unclear. On some occasions, the categories appear to be used synonymously, but in other writings, such as the poem of Era, there is a clear distinction between the two. In the late Akkadian epic, the Igigi are the sixth generation of the gods who are forced to perform labors for the Anunnaki. After 40 days, the Igigi rebel, and the god Enki, one of the Anunnaki, creates humans to replace them. Super, super interesting. So, every time I've heard of the Igigi or the Igigi, they were the Anunnaki slave class. Yes. That they brought with them to Earth. Oh, from the planet. Or another planet. From somewhere. They were their slaves. But they were the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki brought them with. Neat. To Earth. I mean, that makes sense why the Agigi would just be completely randomly introduced in this time period. Because they just kind of show up, you know? That's bullshit! From the Middle Babylonian period, this is from 1592 to 1155 BC, Mm. onward, the name Anunnaki was applied. 
applied generally to the deities of the underworld, whereas the Ajiji was applied to heavenly deities. Oh. During this period, the underworld deities Damkina, Nurgle, and Madanu are listed as the most powerful among the Anunnaki, alongside Marduk, the national god of ancient Babylon. Do you think that's where Madonna got her name from? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, maybe, right? It could where, be. The fu- where the hell else would it have come from? I don't know. I don't I've know. never heard of anything else like that until just now. Neither have I. Madonna. Madonna? Madonna. It's awfully close. Maybe she's paying homage to him secretly. Right. Never know. Yeah. Is that why she's so successful? Maybe. Maybe it has something to do with it. Picking a powerful name. Fucking could be, man. I ain't fucking famous. <laughs> no, I know. I don't have. I don't have a famous name. Right. My name's Cody. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least your name's not Marduk. Yeah. True. Marduk. 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 In the standard Akkadian epic of Gilgamesh, you not pushed him. <laughs> you not pushed him down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. You know. So this person is similar to Noah of the Bible. Oh, okay. And he's the immortal survivor of the Great Flood. It describes the Anunnaki as seven judges of the underworld, again, who set the land aflame as the storm approaches. Later, when the flood comes, Ishtar, the equivalent to Inanna, and the Anunnaki mourn over the destruction of humanity. They got souls, I guess, at least. Little ones, but yeah. they're there. They care. They care just a tad. It's a thought that counts, right? Yeah. (laughs) There's also another story in the Babylonian Enuma Elish, or the Babylonian creation myth. Marduk assigns the Anunnaki their positions. A late Babylonian version of the epic mentions 600 Anunnaki of the underworld, but only 300 Anunnaki of heaven indicating the existence of a complex underworld cosmology. In gratitude, the Anunnaki built a splendid temple dedicated to Marduk, Ea, and Elil. In the 8th century BC poem of Era, the Anunnaki are described as brothers of the god Nurgle and are depicted as antagonistic towards humanity. Picking on them. Yep. Didn't like them. Yeah. Didn't like us. I don't like us much either. Yeah. We could do so much better. We could. So much better. We could. Got to band together. Yeah. Stop being divided. Yeah. Quit being haters. Haters going to hate, though. A badly damaged text from the Neo-Assyrian period describes as Marduk leading his army of Anunnaki into the sacred city of Nippur and causing a disturbance. Not Nippur. Not Nippur. <laughs> Definitely Nippur. The disturbance causes a flood. That's fucking wild. <laughs> They just show up and cause a flood, huh? Yeah. Which forces the resident gods of Nippur to take shelter Eshumesha Temple of Ninurta. Ninurta. Like inertia, but in Ninurta. Yeah. Enlil is enraged at Marduk's transgression and orders the gods of the temple to take Marduk and the other Anunnaki as prisoners. The Anunnaki are captured, but Marduk appoints his front runner to lead a revolt against the gods and send a message to alert Nabu, the god of literacy. Why was he a thing? I don't know. You gotta learn how to talk. When the... You gotta, gotta, you know, be literate. That makes sense. Maybe he was the only one that could communicate well. Maybe he was teaching the human speech. Could have been. Yeah. So they can communicate down the line like, hey, do this. Oh, that would make sense. When the gods hear Nabu speak... They come out of their temple to search for him. Marduk then defeats the gods and takes 360 of them as prisoners of war, including Enlil himself. Enlil protests that the Eshumesha gods are innocent, so Marduk puts them on trial before the Anunnaki. The text ends with a warning from Ninhursag to the gods and to humanity, pleading with them not to repeat the war between the Anunnaki and the gods of Eshumesha. And that's where it ends. That's it. That's all, huh? I guess. That's all I found. Huh. If you're enjoying this topic and would like to talk more about it, you can find us at Edible Attitude or at Edible Attitude Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. In the mythologies of the Hurrians and the Hittites, 
The oldest generations of gods were believed to have been banished by the younger gods to the underworld, where they were ruled by the goddess Lilwani. Hittite scribes identified these deities with the Anunnaki. In ancient Hurrian, the Anunnaki are referred to in their language as former ancient gods or gods of the earth. Hittite and Hurrian treaties were often sworn by the old gods in order to ensure that the oaths would be kept. In one myth, the gods are threatened by a stone giant, so Ea commands the former gods to find the weapon that was used to separate the heavens from the earth. They find it and use it to cut off the giant's feet. Like a mythical weapon. Right. So after... What, what was giant it? feet got to be thick and bony, too, so it's got to be quite a slice. It was a stone giant, too. Wow. Yeah, so right, right. Real yeah. tough. Huh. Sharp. Real sharp. Real sharp. Hot, maybe. And we got some heat in that thing. Just dip it in lava. Chop it off. I don't know. If it sounds mythical, who knows? Could be just glowing with power. A little sun sword. <laughs> that would be cool. You know, a little shard of sun. <laughs> Swinging. <laughs> just just like a whole, whole sun beam. beam. Yeah. Like a lightsaber. Like a better. lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be wild to see. Yeah, it would. So all of a sudden, someone just pulls out the sun sword. Yeah, I'm thinking like a like a rectangular blade, like like a curved one, like a big curved one. Not necessarily curved, kind of straight, because it's like it's got shit coming off of it, like heat right, and yep, etherealness, and then it like notches at the end, right? Oh, one of those ones. Yeah, yeah, it angles off at the end. I don't know, just what I'm feeling. Feels like a good sun blade. I was thinking more like it's sharp and pointy, and you, you ever seen like those videos of the sun? And you see like a like a sun flare come out and it's got like the like almost like a loop, right? Yeah. That's what I am imagining. Like the sword is just a sun like a literal piece of the sun that's curved. Like a shimtar. Kinda. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's good too. Although the names of the Anunnaki in Hurian and Hittite texts frequently vary. Horian. Hurian. Not Horian. <laughs> Same thing, dude. It sounds like Stewie <laughs> saying it. <laughs> it's Horian. You were. <laughs> you were. <laughs> they are always eight in number. In one Hittite ritual, the names of the old gods are listed as Adentari, the diviner, Zulki, the dream interpretess, Irpatia, lord of the earth, Nara, Namsara, Minki, Amunki, a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pronounced a monkey. A monkey. And Api. The old gods had no identifiable cult in the Hurio Hittite religion. Instead, the Hurians and the Hittites sought to communicate with the old gods through the ritual sacrifice of a piglet in a pit dug in the ground. The old gods were often invoked to perform ritual pur- purifications. So some some form of worship slash sacrifice thing that they did. Right. The Hittite account of the old god's banishment to the underworld is closely related with the Greek poet Hesiod's narrative of the overthrow of the Titans by the Olympians in his Theogony. The Greek sky god Uranos, whose name means heaven, is the father of the Titans and is derived from the Hittite version of Anu. In Hesiod's account, Uranos is castrated by his son Cronus, just as Anu was castrated by his son Kumarbi in the Hittite story. So it sounds like Hesiod took some interesting things from the Hittite religion and made it his own. Right. Sounds sounds familiar. Sounds very People familiar. People do that all the time. Take a little something, make it their own. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. He could definitely do, hey, I heard this, heard this story about this guy, and they didn't have Google back then. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was all word of mouth, mm-hmm. supposedly. Maybe. We don't know. We don't. I have some conspiracy theories, Mm -hmm. as I know you do too. It's all conspiracy theory. So the first theory I got is over a series of published books, starting with the Chariots of the Gods in 1968, pseudo-archaeologist Eric von Doniken claimed that extraterrestrial quote-unquote ancient astronauts had visited a prehistoric Earth. Dynakin explains the origins of religions as reactions to contact with an alien race and offers interpretations of Sumerian texts and the Old Testament as evidence. Interesting. Which some stories 
in the Old Testament 100%. Yeah. I can see that happening. Yeah. Because some things in there are weird. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, some of... I thought there was like a flying saucer-like object that one of the angels used in the Bible somewhere. No, they had wings though, right? Yeah, so why would they use that? A chariot in the sky, that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. That's That was the reference to UFO that I'm thinking of from the Bible. Chariot in the sky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that. Another one I have is in the 1976 book, The Twelfth Planet, author Zakaria Stitchin claimed that the Anunnaki were actually an advanced humanoid extraterrestrial species from the undiscovered planet Nibiru, like you said, yeah. who came to Earth around 500,000 years ago and constructed a base of operations in order to mine gold after discovering that the planet was rich in the precious metal. According to Stitchin, the Anunnaki hybridized their species and Homo erectus via in vitro fertilization in order to create humans as a slave species of miners. Stitchin claimed that the Anunnaki were forced to temporarily leave Earth's surface and orbit the planet when Antarctic glaciers melted, causing the Great Flood, which also destroyed the Anunnaki's bases on Earth. These had to be rebuilt, and the Anunnaki needing more humans to help this massive effort taught mankind agriculture. Interesting. So yeah, that Stitchin's theory is the one I have heard the most. Um, Me too. I don't remember what his exact background is as far as like his credentials or whatever. I just remember he's been like studying ancient texts and alien stuff for a long time. For a while. Like that's been his life studies essentially he read the sumerian text himself i guess like he's seen the actual og ones the original the originals i guess oh. or whatever is out there um so he deciphered them himself like he he's been he's deciphered hieroglyphs and all that stuff that's been what he's been doing for his whole career i guess so he did it with the sumerian text and then wrote the book that you brought up and gave his interpretation of it which is different than we, what we had heard earlier. It's, it's yeah, basically what you had said. This is, like I said, what I've heard the most on my YouTube watches, my deep dives into being interested into this subject. So the Anunnaki were first written about in the Sumerian text. Sumeria was the first organized civilization, quote-unquote. Right. So the Anunnaki were from this planet Nibiru, which travels on a rotational cycle and it comes near earth about every 3600 years that's bullshit that's a right. big cycle yeah it goes on an oval like a long oval cycle i guess that makes sense as to why there's like an asteroid belt over there could be planning in the bureau kicking the shit out of these asteroids mm -hmm. and then making debris yeah maybe especially if they have such advanced technology you know? yeah 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 they are they are said to be uh, much more advanced than us have greatly advanced technology Maybe that's what they use for training. Like when they're training their new pilots in space. They go to the asteroid belt mm. and shoot shit up. And shoot it up. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Could be. Could be. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. As shit. Yeah. That'd be super fun. It's like flying around an X-Wing blasting asteroids. Maybe not an X-Wing, but close. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun as hell. Space vehicle. So yeah, Planet Nibiru comes in rotation every 3,600 years. But, like you were saying, their their atmosphere on Nibiru wasn't good. They had harsh winds and weathers. They couldn't grow crops very well. They couldn't sustain life easily. It, they had to do a lot of work. Like, it took a lot of effort to sustain life. Yeah. So, they wanted to find a way to s sustain their atmosphere better, hold the heat in better, I guess. So, it's not so cold and they can grow stuff and live easier. That makes sense if it, you know, big oval and it heats up only so many so often so often right yeah. well you want to get that heat and you want to keep it right right so they were figuring it out and they came up with the idea of particleizing gold and blasting it into their atmosphere oh shit yeah but they didn't have shit for gold like at all they didn't have enough to be able to do it and they didn't want to deplete their planet you know fair smart yeah hello humans hi <laughs> yeah so they're on their cycle of their 3,600 years, and they're checking all the planets that they're coming across for gold, you know, that they can harvest and bring back and do what they need to with. And nothing's really panning out for the gold that they need, if, the, if there is any. 
until they come across Earth. Lucky bastards. Yeah. When they come across Earth, there's there's no humans. There's no people. Right. Prehistoric times. It's animals. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was dinosaurs or what it was exactly. Could have been you know. a numerous things. Right. But it was it was said to be only animals, lower hominids type stuff, like little monkey type things, cavemen maybe. Maybe. Not quite human or Neanderthal yet. Maybe a lower step than Neanderthal even type. Oh. You know? Like first beginning humans. Kinda. So they come here and they find a ton of gold. As we know we've had on this planet. Right. You know, we've gold rush was a thing, right? Yeah. Gold's a valuable item worldwide. Not as far as we know. As far as we know, yeah. yeah. Gold's valuable because of what it can do as a metal. Not just because it's pretty. Because it's so viable. Because you can melt it down and you won't lose any. Right. And it, because it stays... it can, you can do so many different things with it. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a incredible material, really. It's precious. Very precious, yeah. Not just because it's pretty. They come to Earth and they, they're they like, shit, we don't want to do all this work. There's all that gold, but we don't want to dig it. So we, we need to bring in our, our slave workers, our a Gigi, a Gigi, you know. I, you had mentioned them earlier. Yep. I don't. All I know is they were referred to as the Anunnaki slave race. Whether it was of Anunnaki blood or from another planet, not sure. But they brought them with to mine the gold. The GG did this for quite a while. Till they got sick and tired until, of it. Until yeah, they got sick of it. They're like, we don't. We're, t- we're tired of being slaves. We don't want to do this no more. And they fought back. They decided to wage war on the Anunnaki. And the Anunnaki fucked them up. Pretty much damn near wiped them out. Yeah. Because they had the advanced technology and... Right. Were, yeah. Super advanced alien species. Big. They were big, too. Like you were saying, they were they were giants, quote unquote. Yep. They screwed these GG Gigi right up and pretty much wiped them out. And uh, the Anunnaki realized they didn't have a workforce anymore. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> What do we do now? We 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 don't have any more of our slaves, really. Them things running around here ain't smart enough to listen to what the <laughs> hell we're you know trying to tell them to do. Like shit, man. What are we gonna do? They came up with the idea of altering genetics on the planet, right? And messing with things, playing with things, kind of like what Stitchin was saying. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This is sti- pretty much what Stitchin was saying. This is just YouTube version of it, I guess. Sure. You know, different. I've heard this version over many videos because I like to watch different people, people's opinions on what they're hearing and seeing, and this is my summary of what I've heard and seen, I guess. This is my YouTube version. So, the Anunnaki began messing with genetics, and their first few experiments didn't go well. They weren't great. They were strong enough, usually, but often too brutal. Or something bad, right? A lot of times it was too brutal, like too vicious, though. Oh, yeah, like, like they were just animalistic beastly. tendencies. Yeah, they were they were playing with animal genetics and whatnot at that time. They even made the Nephilim. Okay, was one of their species before humans that they had created, which would make sense as to why the Nephilim were so beast-like. They were, yeah, they were also like giants and angry. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um. The Anunnaki took one look at them and said, we can't do this. <laughs> Not these. These dudes are big as shit. They're super strong, but they're dumber than hell. <laughs> we know. And they're vicious. Like, they're just ravaging. Kind of like we had heard of the cannibal, Nephilim, possible giants, you know, the yeah. giants of Kandahar and stuff and Lovelock Cave. So they scratched them, got them out of there. And they're like, you know, what are we doing wrong here? What's What's the problem? And they're like, well... What if we start inserting our own DNA instead of, like, messing with just their DNA? What if we insert some of our DNA? I think they were doing that. That's how they got the Nephilim. They were on the right track. They're on the right track. So in this, Key decided to, instead of do in vitro with species that she would carry to term. And that's how humans were first born. The first species of human, or the first human born, was named Adamu. Otherwise, Adam. Oh. Yeah. So not Neanderthal. No. This was human. This was us, as we are. So, key birthed humans. 
and the Anunnaki like started to like these humans like we're like cool with them like they enjoyed them they enjoyed what they created I guess and kind of befriended them a little that's good yeah G- great yeah they wouldn't like us now but great yes Adamu was the first man made and then like that's so close to Adam it has his name in there yeah with a U yeah just take the U out and it's Adam the Anunnaki also realized, I, sh- I should go back here a little, a little bit, that the creations they were making were too big. So they decided to alter the DNA to make us smaller so we couldn't fight back as easy. Smart. And that's why to us, they're giants. That would make sense. But for back then, it was like normal, I guess. Everybody, everything was big. Right. Right, which we've we've heard before in yep. different stories. There's more oxygen. That's why dinosaurs were so big and yep. you know all that. I don't know, man. Some humans are pretty goddamn tall. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. There's been huge ones. Nine-footers, right? Nine-footers. Yeah. <laughs> Comparing, like, fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like, a, like something we're hunting or fishing. Yeah. <laughs> we got a nine-footer got a over nine here. nine-footer the other day. <laughs> snakes. Catching snakes. Ugh. <laughs> so they had these slaves that, you know, they had for gold and stuff. But they, they started to like these people and started hanging out with them in the Garden of Eden. They welcomed the humans in the garden. They created the Garden of Eden. That's where all the humans were born. Like, that was Anunnaki's home base, was the Garden of Eden. Oh. Yeah. That was where they put in home base and hung out and decided to, you know, grow and nurture things. And and then let they, they kept the humans in there and grew in, in there, protecting them from the animals and stuff until... So Eden wasn't their only base, though. Like, there's other ones, because according to Stitchin, there's more than one. Yeah. But that's where they first landed. Oh, that okay. was the, like the mothership spot. Oh, you know okay. What I'm yeah, yeah. So yeah, they had the humans in there and were growing them and hanging out until humans started to fornicate and multiply rapidly, like rabbits. <laughs> like rabbits. Yeah. The the numbers became unsustainable, so they had to kick them all the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Eden got too small. They were huh? like, nah, oh, dude, you guys, you're good. Get out of here. Like, you, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it out there in the wild now. You guys are good. Yeah. Have fun. Around this time, Nibiru came back on its cycle of 3,600 years. Okay. And this time it came closer. They had knew that it was coming, that they were, the planet was coming, and King and Queen were coming to check on them or whatever, you know, and see what the hell's going on. Yeah. But I guess this time it, it came closer or something or... It didn't mention it early on, but it it said that this time, and from every time after, that every time Nibiru comes around, great catastrophe happens on the planet. Like the flood. Like the flood. Yeah. And that's where the flood came from that time. So... It was from when they came back around. Do you think the first time they came here, they were the meteor that killed the dinosaurs? Maybe. Crashing in and landing on Eden or whatever. Making Eden. Could be might be it's possible that's what some theories think yeah it's a good theory yeah we don't fucking know right <laughs> it could be we were talking about like the dna splicing stuff right yeah so one of the fun theories out there about this is how jesus was a virgin birth but it's also said that his mother was a virgin birth oh that's odd and today we can have virgin births we can do that today with in vitro Right. Which is what they said they were doing in Anunnaki days. Okay. So could it be that they were still using in vitro at the time Jesus was born is a theory. Maybe. Yeah, instead of he was born from God, it was Anunnaki, but which he, was the gods. Right, literal gods, right, yeah. Right, Fun little thing. That's interesting. Yeah. I've never thought about that. Mm-hmm. Now I have. Right. Now I'm gonna. Because sure, God, or Jesus was the son of God, they say, right? Yep. But why was Mary born of a virgin mother? She appeased the gods too. Well, in her story, it's the God. There's only one God. Right. Is that yeah. why she's so like revered as being holy? But her son was holy. Was she holy? She's the holy mother. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Fun little thing to think about. It is a fun little thing to think about. Yeah. That's a good, good question. All this is so interesting. Yeah, but what about Joseph? He's just hanging out. And he's like, what the fuck's happening? I didn't even get laid. God damn it. <laughs> that poor man's blue balls. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Like you had also said before, the Anunnaki, before they had to leave, 
because of the flood and stuff with Nibiru coming back. Right. That's when they left. They just show up and leave whenever they fuck stuff up. Okay, guys. There's different stories. Fuck stuff up. Yeah, Sorry. Exactly. We'll be back later. We'll be back later. <laughs> After we'll you fix your shit, we'll be back. Yeah, you fix it. Yeah, we'll I, come back. We ain't doing the work. They're lazy. That much I found out is the motherfuckers are lazy oh, as shit. Oh, yeah. Like, we ain't doing it. We're getting somebody else to do it. Which, I guess, if you're super advanced, why not? Whatever. You got the power. But yeah, before they left, they taught them agriculture and math and music and all that stuff. Writing and monarchy, I had heard, too. They taught them like monarchy? Like bloodline, yeah. Oh. Yeah, bloodline stuff. That's interesting mm-hmm. to think about. Enlil was of royal bloodline, and he was bestowed the Earth as the ruler. So if and you other go... royal bloodlines at other planets. and So let's say... Like they ruled the universe type shit. So you know how Queen Elizabeth, the second, yeah, that we just had, mm-hmm. she's of royal bloodline. Right. Do you think if we go back that far, we can trace it all the way back? I don't know. There's funny things said about her having weird bloodline. Actually, of alien species, a different alien species than the Anunnaki. Is that why she was literally older than dirt? I don't know. About this blood talk and bloodline talk, I had seen something the other day. It was super interesting. It was. A theory about the different blood types on Earth and where they come from and how they may be from different alien species. It's a good question. Yeah, it's super interesting. It was it was like O positive, O negative were from Nibiru, Anunnaki. Uh-huh. A B was Draconian, I think, or something like that. A positive and negative. But that was like Placidian and something else. What does placenta have to do with anything? That's bullshit. <laughs> The Placidians. The Placidians. Or like the Blondes, the Nordics. Oh. Yeah. Oh, those guys. Yeah. And then there's the Greys. Those are the other type of blood. Weird. So it was said Queen Elizabeth was from the Draconian race of alien bloodline. Okay. Yeah. A lot of celebrities and famous people are as well. Lizards. Lizard people, essentially, yeah. Lizard the Draconians. People. They're shapeshifters, supposedly. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. That's a big maybe. Yeah. If I they would, can shapeshift, I'm sure it could fool the I, shit out I, of us. No yeah. shit. I wish I could shapeshift. That'd be yeah. cool. Right. It's easier to fool a man than to convince him he's been fooled. Never heard that one before. That's a good one. It's true. It really is. Yeah. There's a lot of shit I've never even thought about. Never even thought would be in the realm of possibilities. Yeah. There's, there's cr- all sorts of crazy theories out there. There's. I've heard some of them, but yeah. not like this. Really? Yeah. This is just the tip of the iceberg of oh, I theories on bet. these things. Yeah. That's definitely something to chew on for sure. Yeah. I'm sure if I wanted to really go down this rabbit hole, I could, but I'm yeah. afraid I might get lost. You could. Just take a buoy. Life jacket. Just take a buoy. Yeah, take a life jacket. <laughs> I'd try. I'd Make try. Sure you stay floating. Yeah. Hell yeah. Just lose myself on the internet. Just stay curious. Always. Yeah. At always. So according to Ronald H. Fritz, he writes that according to Stitchin, the Anunnaki built the pyramids and all other monumental structures from around the ancient world that ancient astronaut theorists consider so impossible to build without highly advanced technologies. I've yeah. heard that before. Yeah, Anunnaki. Aliens but, built pyramids, yep. But there's a lot of there's been a lot of videos on YouTube like debunking that like you could with pulleys and with wood and with other certain leverages, you can move these heavy ass blocks quite easily. Yeah. With one person. Yeah. If you know what you're doing, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure they in a way had access to that because they had to dock boats somehow, did they not? And make boats. So it's, I'm talking just like pyramids. Right. In that area. Yeah. Or that time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had water back then, right? Yep. They did have water. It was lush. A lot of theories I've heard on that. No one knows. Nope. Someone Supposedly. knows. Someone might, but they won't tell us. Stitchin expanded on this mythology in his later works, including The Stairway to Heaven, The Wars of Gods and Men, In the End Days, Armageddon, and The Prophecy of the Return. Stitchin predicted that the Anunnaki would return to Earth possibly as soon as 2012, mm-hmm. corresponding to the end of the Mesoamerican Long Count Calendar. Which we know, nothing happened. As far as we perceive. As far as we perceive. Mm -hmm. Stitchin's writings have been universally rejected by mainstream historians who have labeled his works as pseudo-archaeology, 
asserting that Stitchin seems to deliberately misrepresent Sumerian text by quoting them out of context, shorten quotations, and mistranslating Sumerian words to give them radically different meanings from their accepted definitions. Haters gonna hate, man. Haters gonna hate. David Ick, the British conspiracy theorist who popularized the reptilian conspiracy theory, has claimed that the reptilian overlords of his theory are in fact the Anunnaki, like we said. Clearly influenced by Stitchin's writings, Ick adapts them in favor of his own new age and conspiracy agenda. Ick's speculations on the Anunnaki and corporate's far-right views on history posing an Aryan master race descended by blood from the Anunnaki. It also incorporates dragons, Dracula, and draconian laws. These three elements apparently linked only by superficial linguistic similarity. He formulated his views on the Anunnaki in the 90s and has written several books about his theory. In 2001, a documentary about Ick, Ron Johnson cited a cartoon called Rothschild by Charles Leandre, arguing that Jews have long been depicted as lizard-like creatures who are out to control the world. I have heard that. Yeah. So have I. Yeah. That's what Hitler was trying to get rid of them for supposed reasons. That's why I was trying to create that Aryan race, Aryan master race, right? right? Yeah, I have heard Anunnaki were the draconians, lizard people, but more often they're not. The Anunnaki are more humanoid, look like us. I don't really know where the draconian theory comes from. It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe like we were talking well, about it's, with the it's Nephilim. Not, it's not just theory. It's been human interaction reported dealing with draconians and nordics types and like anunnaki type they've said and different types of grays and whole bunch of shit yes yep whole bunch of conspiracy shit astronaut theorists ancient astronaut theorists right current current astronaut yeah. theorists current astronaut theorists hmm we have theorists now <laughs> not yep. all theorists yep. are just ancient that's true all, that's bro. true <laughs> theorists are every every age Every age, every race. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. So out of the different mythologies, Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian, and the Hurrian and the Hittite, which one do you think is the most accurate? Sumerian may be the oldest. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, first that it was around and everything kind of just bounced off of that. A lot of these texts, they say the same shit. Yeah, which just, is common. Just different ways. Mm -hmm. Which is what humans do yep. in different parts of the world. They tell stories. Stories get handed down. Different words are used in different languages. Right. Yeah. Translations. Yeah, that's that's just standard human history as far as we know it. I've always been into the Sumerian version just because it's the oldest. The first organized city, you know. Yeah. What, what was the term I had heard? First organized civilization. That's first what I'm trying to say. organized civilization. Yeah. Whatever the hell that means. Whether they're the first ones to keep record or what, I'm not sure. First ones to have a post office. First ones know. to come together and work together. Something. You know. Set up a government. Yeah, maybe. The first one to set that whole Could be. monarchy up for right. the bloodlines and whatever else. Right. Learned straight from maybe the Anunnaki there. Yeah. They were the first ones to organize and set up after the flood disaster and all that shit and... Well, they didn't do a very good job of recording. Did the best they could with what they had, I guess. Maybe they had more that didn't sustain through time, too. Humans tried, apparently. Yeah. I mean, think about it, man. If we had... Because there was talks of, you know, possible nuclear war and stuff, right? There's yeah. stories. If we had nuclear war pop off and hit us today, we really wouldn't have shit for a record either. That's Most true. of it's digital and it would be gone in an instant. That's also true. Yeah. And they had paper and stone maybe there's theories that there was more technology but it got wiped out and we had to restart over sure and that's happened time and time again throughout the years supposedly but so when's the next time the bureau is supposed to show up i want to be ready for it some say it's on its way now some say they've seen it in the sky already some say soon some say not for 100 years huh. no one really knows but this, i guess it's not totally true so we do have a planet that we have found within the last i don't know 20 years maybe 50 years something like that called planet x i've heard about You've that heard about planet x yep 
which interestingly has a 3600 cycle, 3600 year cycle, and it comes closer to our planet. That's odd. Interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. People believe that's Nibiru. Maybe. Maybe. It lines up. It, I mean, yeah, it does. They were writing that down. They were tracking that thing for 3,600 years, though, before it's come back to, like, who was tracking that to know, like, that's the same thing 3,600 years later? What about the Mayans? They tracked the stars, didn't they not? I guess, but this was bef- long before the Mayans. Samaria is hmm. long before the Mayans. Yeah, yeah. Way long, yeah. Supposedly, yeah. Right? Egyptians studied the stars, too. Maybe that's why humans have been so obsessed with the cosmos forever. Ever. Always tracking stuff, always trying to figure shit out, making calendars out of whatnot. Ooh, NASA says it's a hypothetical planet. It's a hypothetical now? But I swore it was, I heard it was a real planet. Yeah, yeah 100%. That's what I like, heard. F- like years ago, right? Oh, uh, now they're just lying. They're like, nah, this ain't true. Says it has not yet been discovered. Sure, uh-huh. Someone with a galaxy S23X could see that thing with their camera. The prediction of the planet is based on a mathematical modeling. So mathematically it should be there. But there's no actual evidence? No evidence, just math. Right. But math kind of explains everything in our universe as far as we know it. There's math everywhere. Very true. Code and everything, quote unquote. Yeah, we are just a bunch of ones and zeros. Yeah. Essentially at the yeah, core. Yeah. yeah. Matrix. There was an interesting study done back in the day about the soul, actually. The weight of the soul. Yeah. Have you ever heard about that? Yeah. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, this doctor, I guess he didn't do enough... He didn't have enough patience for it to be considered a full study. So it's it can only be considered a theory because he didn't do it on enough patience. Ah, uh, okay. But he had patience and he weighed them before and after death. Yep. And each and every time, there was a 21 gram difference. You sure it's not just the excrement that came out of them after they, you know, passed? I don't I don't know. This is all I know about the story. But each and every time there's a 21 gram difference. 21 grams. Yeah. If all you truly are is 21 grams, if you're just your soul in a meat suit, right? Soul in a meat suit. Right, right, right. You're driving this thing yeah, at the top. Right. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. In the pineal gland, they say. The pineal gland? Mm-hmm. Where's that at? It's up in here. Somewhere. In your brain. Like front brain, back brain? Middle brain, I believe. Middle. That would make sense if the whole thing was, you know, connected spine. I don't know for sure exactly where it is. But yeah, it's somewhere in your brain. Okay. It looks like an eye. It has an iris, I guess. That's weird. It's called your third eye. I've heard that. Yeah. That's your pineal gland. Oh. Yeah. But it's been calcified because of all the shit in our toothpaste, right? And water. And water, yeah. And everything else that we're fed, yeah. Yep. Wild. Uh Uh-huh. Wild to think about. Yeah, dude. Are our souls trapped here? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what was your favorite or most interesting thing you'd found about this subject? It all kind of kind of blended together with the same shit. But if anything, I like an honest story of going to the underworld mm, mm-hmm. and trying to like kick them out and be like, "Nah, this is my place right. now." If I, <laughs> I, I want to read that just to try to figure out what the fuck she was thinking. Power trip, man. She had to have been. It's like so many other characters in history stories, you know? She was like, hold on, I'm going to change shit real quick. Be right yeah. back. Yeah. And then and they the, kicked her out. The group were, the group projects said, hell no. <laughs> yeah. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Both Cephas, what are you doing? Kicking out the new person. Right. Yeah, but I really like that. Or maybe she was the old head, too. You know, maybe <laughs> she had started it and then formed this thing, and they're like, no, you're, you're out of here now. We're, we're running the show. We're going to do it. Maybe. Could be. And she's trying to get her shit back, and they're like, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I think that's going to do it. That's all I got. That's about all I got, too. It's a sweet. Fun, fun subject. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Definitely another interesting one. Yeah, there's, there's rabbit holes you can go down if you want to. Lots of them. Well, thanks for coming, buddy. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for, for talking about this. Yeah, thanks for picking the subject. I know I've been kind of poking at you for a while to for a while talk about it. Oh, congratulations, by the way. Why? This is episode 20. Episode 20! Hey. Let's go! That's awesome, man. Yeah. Shoot, I didn't realize we're at 20 already. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Cool. 
Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for being here. If you've been here for all 20 or just one, we appreciate it. We do. We really appreciate it. All your listens, all your likes, it helps us out a ton. We appreciate each and every one of you. We love the shit out of you. Love the shit out of you. Hell yeah. Well, I guess I better get going. Same. Time to call it a wrap. All right. I'm out of here. Me too. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Cody. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. Mm-hmm.